What's going on guys, Winter Kills here, welcome to a brand new post commentary dual video. I know the video looks a little bit different, that's why, or this, that's because this was from a live stream that happened the other night, uh, and I wanted to uh, highlight this duel and go ahead and upload it for you guys, for those who obviously weren't there to see it happen. Uh, so as you know, or you can tell by the title, I'm playing Mermels on the right, my brother's still playing that Fluffle deck of his on the left, still learning the deck, getting used to some of the plays it can make, etc, etc. Uh, so, uh, please forgive him, he does not make the plays that a seasoned Fluffle veteran would make, uh, because obviously that just isn't going to happen. But either way, I get things started here by summoning Prince, sending Dragoons, adding Dragoons to Megalo, and then summoning Megalo by discarding two copies of Dra Dragoons, since I did open up that, uh, other copy of it, and I'm gonna go ahead and go right into Underclock Taker, summon Moolin Glacia, right here, and, uh, I'm gonna be, go ahead and summon Teus. Uh, or some other uh, card, I believe. Yeah, it's gonna be Megalo pitching Marksman and Guns. So this time I didn't need Teus for the combo, but you're gonna see the extra link play happen here regardless. So I'm going to Deco Talker with Moulin Glacia and uh, that Underclock Taker. Then I make the Tomahawk in the center zone, summon four tokens, and then use the token or the decode and the Tomahawk to go into my first copy of Nightmare Goblin, and then use decode and a token to go into Firewall Dragon, and then I'm going to go into uh, Mermaid, Pitch, Swap Frog, and uh, go ahead and special out Ibly. Now, since I opened up an extender here, I can go into all five Nightmares uh, with this opening board that I have, uh, and then go to draw obviously off the co-linked mermaid and then i go ahead and use the uh mermaid and the ibli for a second goblin i had a proxy one then i pull the other one out of grave uh just so i could use it again because my other goblin still isn't here just yet then i go ahead and pitch diva for the goblin play get the extra normal or get the special uh and then use that and a token to make proxy and then another token to make uh the link spider add back three cards Ibli, Prince, and one other card among them. Um, and then I normal summon Ibli for my extra normal. And then I revive Underclock Taker. And then it's just more and more combos here. She's so already down two cards. Uh, Prince gets summoned off Firewall, go into Link Karibo. And then uh, the Firewall trigger, special summoning Swap Frog from my hand. And then uh, that will send Ronin Toe to the grave before I continue on in my plays any further. Uh, and now I believe I can make. Uh, Cerberus, I believe. I know I go into Unicorn, uh, with Goblin and Swap Frog, uh, and then I summon out Ronin Toten and uh, go ahead and use that to make Cerberus, and then another summon from hand to make uh, the Phoenix with Firewall and the other monster. So now I have. I didn't end with the five nightmares, but uh, there is a combo. Where if you open Teus Prince and any extender with any other random cards, um, you can end with all five nightmares, and then you draw like four or five for turn. It's pretty nuts, but I'm still able to end here with Link Spider, Link Karibo, uh, Phoenix, Unicorn, Trigate Wizard, and Cerberus. It's still a very very strong board. Uh, my opponent does rely on the extra deck. I forgot to give him the Ibli. As I usually do, it's so easy to forget the Ibli with this play. There's so many combos. It's like the most easy to forget thing in the entire universe. Um, and I just happen to forget it. So, it is what it is, though. Regardless, my board, as it stands, though, should be strong enough uh, to help me out and uh, give me the sticking power, I would say, would be the best word that I need to hopefully secure this game one none of my cards can be destroyed by battle none of them can be destroyed by card effects i do have a negation and i do get to draw we one two three cards during my next draw phase so he activates foolish barrier there foolish burial there and sends edgem sabers from deck to grave so obviously you could set something up there with toy vendor uh, you know, especially summon that out of grave by stacking a card from the top, from your hand to the top of your deck, much like a Plague Spreader Zombie. And, uh, that obviously coincides very well with a card like Toy Vendor, because you do draw and reveal if the card is an edge imp or Fluffle card, you get to special summon it. Uh, or, no, I believe it's a Fluffle card you get to special summon, I forget what the exact wording is, but, um, 
you can set up that nice stack play though of course with sabers and uh, the toy vendor play working very well together now it's just basically deciding what does he what is his plan really to go into here if he's extra linked uh there's you know not really a whole lot he can do other than just pass and i draw three for turn uh, i can't attack him this turn so i just pass um and he kind of said on the board that i have i drew into droll log bird which in of itself should be enough to secure me the game at least this turn now because not only do i have a negation uh but when he does go to search uh sorry about the, the camera getting knocked there i believe it was my uh, uh my dog or someone accidentally bumped the camera or something um my apologies but uh still deciding at this point what the best move is going to be and uh pretty hard for anybody to play around this board unless you had something like raw sphere mode perhaps a kaiju for the trigate wizard to break the co-links um would probably be the best that goes and pitches bear uh from hand that that sets a toy vendor go ahead and let that go and uh because it's not really a threat to me at all actually um can't even really get a fusion monster on board probably hoping to draw into something maybe to help clear the field i don't know he's gonna flip that toy vendor face up and then he's gonna go and use it and uh debating on whether or not i want to use the trigate uh negate and banish on it but i don't know if it's exactly worth it and then he goes and uses Edgem Sabers here. I believe he's attempting to use it. He does have a card like Fluffle Penguin in hand, which of course would be fantastic, uh, you know, if there wasn't an extra link on my side of the field. So he does summon it and stacks the Penguin. And that'll get special to his field anyways. I think all it was at this point was he was just trying to hope for some, maybe some way there he could have been possibly able to break this lock. He activates Polarization here, even though he technically can't because he doesn't have access to an extra monster zone. And from there, we'll quickly head into game two. That lock proving to be very, very, very potent, especially in a matchup like this where he just need at least one monster zone just to get a fusion on board. But as you can see, the extra link combo proving to be very uh, volatile with a lot of the nightmares. Uh, I do droll lock him on the activation of the after after the dog resolves, but then he's able to go into a quick rank four, and that's Abyss Dweller, probably the hardest hitting rank four to go into against me. Uh, that is just a straight knife in the back. I draw for turn, and he's going to activate it in standby phase. I activate Sekka's Light to get a couple more cards to hand. Now I do have the Swap Frog engine. Like my hand is actually like really good as it stands, but obviously do rely a lot on the graveyard to get any sort of plays going. Um, summon that for normal, send swap to grave, special summon it by discarding Rosenix, and use that swap frog effect again to send Ronin Toad into the graveyard. Just trying to deck thin a little bit, get my graveyard loaded for the next couple of turns if I'm able to survive the next couple of turns you know fluffles a deck that i can otk very fast when you have cards like wolf you know they can attack up to four times and that's eight thousand damage right there plus anything else like a saber tooth or a tiger that hits the board early it pops a couple of cards and went up the way for that wolf to come through and just just swing in for a game like a freaking machine gun and uh and i have two I think I opt to just leave the Swap Frog on board, not needing to return it to hand. Uh, I figured it'd be best just to leave it on the field. And the thing that hurt the most about the Dweller is that in of itself, it just had 2200 attack because he does have a Fluffle Penguin underneath it, which pretty much prevents me from just summoning Teus and crashing, uh, which is what I would have done because I believe Teus was in my hand. And I couldn't do that because I had 2200 attack because it had Fluffle Penguin underneath it. I need to detach Dog first, so it's, it kept that 2200 into this next turn. Where now I could crash into it, but it doesn't matter because he's gotten the Dweller off now two turns in a row. It's allowed me to burn through a couple of cards and him to gain a couple of cards in the process to give him what he needs. Now I'm just to pass back again because I literally can't do anything without just wasting resources 
uh, for little no advantage. I could have summoned Teus and discarded a card that wouldn't have gotten its effect because of Dweller. Just to clear the Dweller, but it doesn't matter because at this point, the Dweller is pretty much useless. Um, it serves no more threat. It's done its job for the past two turns. Master Reborn is going to bring back Fluffle Dog now. He's going to go ahead and activate the effect of it because Fluffle Dog does get his effect when he is either normal or special summoned, which is great, much like Teller Knight Monsters. Which is one thing I think, this is like one advantage that the deck has, is that it has a lot of flexibility in the effects that it can use, and, you know, whether or not something's normal or special summon. We'll get Fluffle Owl, normal summon that, and that searches a poly. Or, then he just normal summons and uses that effect, however you would go for that. Uh, I'm not sure what the effect of Fluffle I'm pretty sure you can pay 400, and then it becomes a polymerization. Uh, he's gonna go into Decode Talker here with the three cards on board and then use polymerization to go into a fl uh, fright for wolf using sabers and two other cards that can attack three times at uh, 2000 attack and of course decode up at 2800 so that's 6000 plus another 28 is 8800 damage and uh, he will take game two pretty quick in comparison to uh, how game one went pretty grindy at least uh, because a lot of times with the extra link combo it does involve you losing your Mulan Glacia uh, which sort of gives your opponent at least one extra turn because otherwise you would just kill them with everything you have on your field uh, but here we get started with Undyne sending Dragoons adding of course controller and Megalo and I'm gonna summon Megalo by discarding infantry or no, uh, Marksman, I believe, and uh, a copy of Angler. That's going to go ahead and summon Sunfish and Beaver. Now, my hand opened up pretty subpar once again. Uh, that is just the nature of this deck. When it opens up bad, it can make a decent play, uh, but obviously nowhere near as good as you could make a play with, uh, you know, if you went up like Prince Teus and any water, uh, Prince Teus, Rosenix, Prince Teus, Swap Frog. Um, there's, an e there's even a combo where if you open up uh, Undyne, Teus, Water, and two random cards where you can make Trigate with Cerberus, Phoenix, and Link Rebo. Um, and I know that's obviously something that uh, the e EU people can't do, which sucks, but, um, you know, if I can play Link Rebo right now, I'm going to play it. I'm not just going to, I'm not just not going to play it because Europe and the rest of the world can't play it yet, but I'm pretty sure... Uh, they're getting Link Rebo this summer, so you guys don't have to wait too much longer if anybody's watching from that area. But I do end with Underclock Phoenix, which uh, I feel like having Battle Immune over Card Effect Immune is uh, going to be a lot better in this matchup because he just likes to get monsters out and attack. Um, which uh, is sort of the case because he could just make... Uh, Sabertooth or Tiger, whichever the one it is that, you know, pops on summon. Um, I'm not too sure, like, what's the easiest one to bring out because I don't ever really play against Fluffles that often unless, you know, you want to count, like, the past couple of days where I played against it maybe one or two times, um, you know, on stream or for a video. As you saw earlier, we had the uh, Penguin going to Dog, Toy Vendor, uh, Revealing. Then special summoning that copy of Penguin. Now, Penguin says you can use its effect to special summon another one from hand so long as uh, you, you know, it's a, it's a once while it's face up on the field effect, but it is a new copy. And I believe it's the same way that Firewall is worded, where you can only use the, where you can use the effect of return cards from either player's graveyard or hand, field to the hand. That's only once while that card is face up on the field, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to regain that effect since it is a new copy uh, that is on the field. Um, and I believe he opted to discard, uh, I think he discarded Wings, but instead discarded the Sabres uh, off the Toy Vendor, because I believe I saw Wings and Grave, and now it switched the, out what he wanted to actually discard. Um, as you see, he'll stack cards from the top of his deck to summon out that Edgem Sabres. And uh, right now, it's just really much, just, he just needs one polymerization to pretty much put me down and uh it's just a subpar opening was all as all it took 
You know, if I would have been able to extra link again, if I would have just opened up one way to perhaps search another Sea Serpent, he's going to go into Tiger, and that's going to pop both Phoenix and Underclock Taker, which is just super, super rough. Um, and then uh, I'm not really too sure what he's going to go ahead and go into now. Uh, I believe, though, the... The uh, Tiger is gaining additional attack for every Fluffle or Fright for a card on the board. So I think it's gaining like 1,800 attack or something. 900 attack. I think it gains like 300 for each one. Uh, including itself. I think a lot of the fusions do that. They, they, they give themselves extra attacks for other copies on the field. And I think most of them include themselves. Uh, which is... Even adds to the... the, 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 the you know, the... Just how good this deck is at OTK in most cases. You know, that little extra 900 or 600 attack boost there comes in a long way. He's going to use Underclock Taker to send the uh, Tiger and one other card to the grave to be able to fusion uh, with Fright for Fusion for Wolf and swing in for massive, massive damage. Uh, Underclock Taker, actually Master Rule 4 just makes this deck a lot better, honestly. He was telling me, you know, if he didn't, if links weren't a thing, uh, he wouldn't have even been able to fusion there into that that massive wolf play. Um, but the fact that he was just pretty much able to send two cards to the grave for the summon of Underclock Taker, pretty much secured it for him. I don't know what it is, man. I get the worst luck. I get the worst luck. But I was able to pull off the extra link game one. Game two, Dweller's a thing. Game three, just did not open up optimally. Uh, I think I might switch back to Saryuja because I feel like there's been more times or not where I've been able to get those four monsters on the field early and just not have a good play to go into as opposed to late game not having a card like Borload to go into. So I think going forward, I think I'll be adding a copy of Saryuja, perhaps cutting my boy, my star boy, uh, because I think it just comes in a lot more clutch. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this dual video. If you did, be sure to leave a like. You know what to do. Leave a comment down in the comment section below. Pick up a playmat if you haven't. A beautiful, beautiful Winter Kills playmat. It would be greatly appreciated. If you do, let me know. And uh, yeah, as always, guys, Winter Kills signing out. We'll see you in the next one.